I don't know if I've mentioned this on here before, but I love Mario Kart. Like, seriously, I have played so much Mario Kart in my life. No, like, I mean so much Mario Kart. It's a, it's a problem. And like any self-respecting Mario Kart fan, I've often found myself asking the question of what it would be like to drive on some of these courses in real life. Terrible, terrible. The answer is terrible. Most of these tracks are riddled with bottomless pits, death traps, and sections that require you to hang glide in a car. Yeah, it's safe to say that in reality, you wouldn't live to see the end of most of these tracks. But the key word there is most. Well, no, I mean, obviously the part about most of these tracks killing you is probably the most important, but the fact remains that not all of these tracks put you on a fast lane to a quick demise. So today, I'm going to be ranking every single track from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe based on how safe they'd be to actually driving them in real life. To do this, we're going to be using my favorite method, the decision matrix. I feel like a lot of you are probably getting sick of me explaining what this thing is in every single video though, so you know what, this time we're skipping all that. If you want to know the exact method I'm using to rank all these, I don't know, go watch one of these videos and then come back. If you already know what it is or just don't care, great. Let's get on with it. Like I said, I'm going to be going through every single track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe released to date and ranking them on a scale from least dangerous just your standard road, to the most dangerous, the kind of stuff Highway to Hell was based on. And yes, that does include the Wave 3 DLC tracks that came out at the time of recording about uh, 11 hours ago. So if you're wondering why the editing of this video seems a little rushed, that's because it was. Oh boy. That brings us to a grand total of, Jesus, 72 tracks? Oh boy, looks like we got a lot of ground to cover. So Richard, Hit that inch. Oh. Look, as much as I would love to just lecture you all about road safety, I'm not some kind of stick in the mud. What? Am I supposed to come on here and try and convince you that driving through Coconut Mall wouldn't be the coolest thing in the world? Even if it does have a mandatory two-story drop in it? Come on, I'm only human. So instead of the usual ranking, today we're adding a second metric. From top to bottom, we'll measure how dangerous a track is, and then from left to right, the cool factor. To be clear, this is not a measurement of how fun the tracks are in the games themselves, but how fun they would be to drive through in real life. How can we measure this? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've come up with four metrics that I think perfectly encapsulates what makes something fun to drive through in real life. I'll rank each track in the game on each of these four metrics, and then use the decision matrix process to turn that into a fun score. Again, I'm not going to explain it here, but I'm guessing you're in too deep to care about it now. The first metric, how many turns does it have? Look, I get it. Some people really like tracks like Baby Park, and those people are wrong. That thing is lame, y'all. Oh, let me drive straight, then turn right. Oh, another straightaway, and what's this? Another right turn, whoa. Look, if I'm going to be driving through a track for fun, I want some variation. I went ahead and counted how many turns there are in a full race for every single track and then added them to my spreadsheet. Next up is elevation. Riddle me this, what do these things all have in common? They all suck. I don't want a track that's flatter than Kansas. I want some ups and downs. I want some excitement. So I went ahead and categorized every single track on a scale from totally flat, meh, whoa. Yeah, and oh, oh, otherwise known as the flatness scale. And on a similar note, the third metric is variation. This is basically just to award bonus points to tracks that don't have repeated laps. Because let's be honest, no matter how cool a track is, by your third time around, it's gonna get a little stale. Most tracks are completely identical from lap to lap. Others have minor differences, branching paths, stuff like that. And some have laps that change drastically or just aren't even looped at all. And last but not least, the whole inspiration behind this move to 2D, the visuals. This is a bit harder to objectively judge, but at the same time, I think we can all agree that driving through a literal pinball machine is considerably cooler than just a straight up highway. 
Dude, get me out of here. And those are our criteria for the fun score. But remember, it's not all fun and games here on the Chip Tide Show. Sometimes we gotta talk about the many ways that you could meet a fiery end because Wario rammed you off the side of an active volcano. <laughs> Mondays, am I right? Just like the fun score, I have four metrics to quantify how quickly these tracks can kill you. The first is large jumps. Look, a little bump here and there is fine. Fun even. But I don't care what kind of crazy evil Knievel stunt driver you are, you're not going to survive shooting your vehicle out of a cannon and trying to hang glide your way across the sea. It's important to note that for this one, I only included mandatory jumps. A lot of tracks feature big jumps that you can take if you want to get a speed boost, but you don't technically need to go over them. And then the others, uh, yeah, no, no, you're just, you're just dead. Also, I wanted to note here that I am not including the zero gravity sections in this. Obviously, yes, driving your car around a giant loop-de-loop -loop is a bad idea, but in the games, it feels like every other track has some physics-defying section in it that's justified by, no, 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 dude, it's chill. Your wheels are sideways now, so you can stick to the road better. And look, I don't have the time to discuss the physics behind this nonsense, so I'll let them just have this one. Just this once. Next up is hazards. This includes things like enemies in the road, hairpin turns without guardrails, and those weird like tar patches that show up on the boring flat tracks. You know the ones I'm talking about. Next up is atmosphere. And no, I'm not talking about like the tracks aura, man. You know what I'm saying? The sort of vibes it's putting out into the universe. No, I'm talking about literally, is there air to breathe? Some tracks have you spend all of the race fully submerged in water, and others take place entirely in the cold, dead vacuum of space. If you need me to explain why driving a golf cart on the moon is a bad idea, I can't help you. And last but not least, the road. Sure, some tracks have you driving on good old pavement, but if you think I want to try and race on a literal ice rink, you're wrong. I, that is incorrect. I do not want to do that. This part required me to ask some very serious questions, since it was difficult to determine how hard it would be to drive on cheese, for example. And then I realized, oh no, wait, that would be terrible. That would be awful driving on cheese. And with all our metrics laid out and the data filled in, it's time to get our final scores and start throwing everything up on the chart. For comparison's sake, I'm going to split the chart into quadrants. Anything to the right of the line is generally considered to be more fun, and anything below the line is considered to be more safe. Of course, here, safe is a relative term, and to be honest, anything that's scored above here on the danger scale will probably still kill you. Got it? Good. In an attempt to keep this video from being two hours long, I'm gonna kind of gloss over everything in this middle area, just because I don't have a whole lot to say about them besides, yeah, they'd probably be pretty fun, I guess, until you're probably dead, and then they wouldn't be that fun anymore. Let's start off with this quadrant, with all the tracks that are relatively safe, but not super exciting either. I call this section roads. They're just roads. GBA Mario Circuit is Pretty benign, it's just your standard country racetrack. Assuming you don't go careening to your death over this big jump. See what I mean about the safety line? Sticking with the GBA, Snowland. Sure, the whole track is on ice, which is pretty bad, but assuming you don't go careening into one of these penguins, yeah, you'll probably be fine. And honestly, I think that would do more psychological damage than physical. Despite the fact that it's literally got Excite in the name, Call me crazy, but I don't think Excite Bike Arena would be as fun as it seems in real life. Sure, it looks like it would be fun until you realize, wait a minute, this is just Baby Park if someone squished it together to sort of make it bump up a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like a, just a little, just a little eh. Sydney Sprint, Paris Promenade, Berlin Byways, and New York Minute are all based off of real life cities. Not particularly exciting, but you're also probably stuck in gridlock, and the most dangerous thing that's going to happen to you is an angry New Yorker smashing your window in. So you know what, actually, I'm going to put this one up here. London Loop is similar to the other city tracks, except it requires you to drive over the Tower Bridge while it's up. Dope. But also, nope. Shroomrish. Sh nope. Sh shroom. Rich. Shroom. 
Shroom Rish Richard, I got this. Shut up. Shroom Rish Shroom Ridge. Yeah, it's alright. Mario Kart Stadium and Mario Circuit 3. I mean, look, it's got Mario in the name. It's probably not that exciting. Sorry, man, but you're like the plain toast of video game characters. Donut Plains is a pretty straightforward track. Nothing too crazy here. Just Hey, wait a second. What is that? A half-completed bridge that you need to Michael Scott off of halfway through? Believe me, the fact that this one is this low on the danger scale says a lot more about the other tracks in the game than the actual safety of this one. Moo Moo Meadows is, look, I'm pretty sure I've driven down this road in real life and it wasn't great. But as long as you let the cows just do their thing, you'll be cool. Unless of course, you're playing in the battle mode on the original Wii U game, in which case, It's a bloodbath. And coming in across the bottom, the only tracks in the game that are totally safe to drive on. In order from most fun to least fun, we've got a seaside road, a road in the shape of Yoshi, a crowded highway, just an oval, and Toad Circuit. Look, I love the Toads, and I will never forgive Nintendo for doing them so dirty and giving them the most boring track in existence. It's literally just a figure eight in the middle of a green field, at least, Baby Park was in an amusement park. You could go do something else when you got bored. Next, we're going to the opposite side and looking at some of the tracks that would be an absolute blast to drive through. I mean, more fun than you've had in your whole life. Mostly because you just ended it. If you were expecting Hyrule Castle to be safe, you've obviously never been to Hyrule before. Complete with carnivorous plants, jumps that lead straight through a magic sword, and a jump that'll send you to the bottom of a moat faster than you can say, yeah, all I'm saying is, you might want to book a century or two in Link's Shrine of Resurrection. But I mean, come on, worth it? Rainbow Road takes place on a space station. Uh, uh, let me clarify, it takes place outside of a space station. I'm honestly not sure how this one didn't rank higher in the danger, but hey, at least the big jumps are easier now. Rainbow Road 3DS. Look, there's like four of these things now and they're all gonna kill you. But hey, at least the laps are different now. That's pretty cool. Ninja Highway is literally designed with traps around every corner to slay all those unworthy of entering the inner sanctum. Awesome. Look, for this next one, I feel like I should clarify that I do not under any circumstances recommend you drive your car out the back of a helicopter and down a very dangerous ski slope. Do not attempt this. Do not attempt anything like this. Or you will die. But I mean, come on, Mount Wario though? Cloud Top Cruise. You can't drive on clouds. But if you could, the part where you dodge the lightning will be pretty cool. And it would also kill you again. Boo Lake. Look. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that all these ghosts were just the people who took that one turn before the ramp a little too hard. Mushroom Gorge. Look, I said before that I love the toads, so if I'm going down, I want it to be bouncing off the heads of the fungi my people were based on. I think. Rock, Rock Mountain. First of all, let me just get this out of the way. Quite possibly the worst name of a track in all of Mario Kart. Whoever was supposed to name this thing clearly forgot until their boss asked them about it during a meeting and they were like, uh, crap, crap, and just started naming things that they saw. It'd be like if I named my apartment Chair, Chair, Room. Second, not only does this track have multiple hang gliding sections with logs and stuff blocking your path, it also has a section where you need to drive up a steep mountainside in the middle of an active landslide, which leads to another hang gliding section. This thing's got danger written all over it. It's pretty fun though, not gonna lie. Merry Mountain. Look, all I'm saying is everybody loves Christmas until you slide into a snowbank on your way to grandma's house and then you're out in the cold trying to fix your car while everyone else is enjoying some Christmas ham and maple tree way. Look, I know I said earlier in the video that this was judging how fun the tracks would be in real life and not necessarily in the game. So despite the fact that I'm a wee boy at heart and Maple Treeway is my freaking jam, I promise that I will not let nostalgia cloud my judgment. In real life, it would still freaking rule. I mean, come on, driving along the branches of a massive maple tree during peak foliage season, nothing better. It'll probably kill you though. And lastly, the most fun 
most dangerous track to drive on in real life, Big Blue. Honestly, I'm not sure driving is the right word here. You're just throwing your car down the world's most unsafe water slide. This is the perfect track for the people who want to live the I'm here for a good time, not a long time lifestyle. And by not a long time, I'd give it, uh, no, 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 you're dead by now. Next up, all the tracks combining adrenaline pumping danger with the boredom that comes from a three hour college class that meets every Monday at five o'clock. I call this section, why? Why would you do that? What, what? Calamari Desert, look. As fun as pulling a Back to the Future and driving down some train tracks would be, it'll suddenly be a lot less fun once that train catches up to you. To make matters worse, most of the track is just driving through open sandy desert. And like, it's Back to the Future 3, so it's not that cool. DS Cheap Cheap Beach. Now, technically speaking, you don't have to drive underwater on this one. If you're freaking that guy from the Fast and the Furious movies, I haven't seen any of these, but I feel like he could probably pull it off. Regular Joe Schmoes like us though? Nah, we're going on the drink for sure. SNES Rainbow Road has all the same problems as the first two Rainbow Roads we talked about, but with all the fun bits taken out. I mean, if you're gonna have my eyes sucked out of my head from lack of pressure, I at least want something more than a flat series of right angle turns to do it on. Dry, dry desert. Leave it to a Mario Kart track to put a mandatory underwater section in a desert level. Oh yeah, and there's also a Sarlacc pit here. That never ends well. Peach Gardens. New to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version, the final lap has you drive the entire course backwards. But that's so irresponsible. Head-on collisions are so dangerous. It's also, I mean, I'll admit, it's pretty cool. And driving through a hedge maze, I mean, that, that, that's kind of fun too. Also, let's be honest, who else high-fived Luigi? All right, fine, I'll bump it over here. Sky Garden, see my rant about Cloudtop Cruise, Shy Guy Falls. I mean, you're driving up and down a literal waterfall. In Sky High Sunday, you're basically flying through the contents of an oversized ice cream truck. Oh, actually, uh, that one sounds pretty cool. All right, I'm moving the fun line here. Not only does Grumble Volcano have you driving around and through an active volcano, not only is the track quickly deteriorating around you and falling into the lava, but it's also just kind of bland. I don't know, throw a couple more turns in there or something, maybe then we'll talk. Piranha Plant Slide is one of two most dangerous tracks in the entire game. I mean, take your pick, there's a bingo card's worth of dangerous driving conditions. Massive jumps, monster plants, hydroplaning, did anybody have extended underwater segments? With all that, it's no wonder they didn't have room to fit an actually interesting track in here. Or maybe, I don't know, I'm just biased after the game's random track selection mode gives me this track every single time. Stop! And just as dangerous as that, but according to my data at least, slightly less fun to drive a real car through is Dolphin Shoals. Look, if I have to explain why driving through this in real life isn't a great idea, Maybe, I don't know, don't get behind the wheel of a car. Like ever. However, on the very off chance that your car radio still works 40 feet under the sea and you can blast that song the whole time, I don't know, might be up. Nah, nah, it, it's still sucks. It's a banger though. And last but not least, the moment you've all been waiting for, the tracks that you could actually drive on in real life without sustaining life-threatening injuries. And, have a blast while doing it. I'm calling this category, hey, Nintendo. If you were looking for an attraction for that Super Mario World thing you've got, an actual go-kart track based on one of these would be pretty cool, just saying. It's a bit of a mouthful, I know, we'll workshop it. At a first glance, Mute City doesn't seem like it would be overly safe to drive on. And, well, it's not, but compared to that other F-01, it's a walk in the park, Coconut Mall. You ever see those cars parked in the middle of malls and never wonder how they got there? Well, some guy had to drive it up an escalator and then off the roof of the building, apparently. And side note, has literally any single person in the world actually bought one of those cars? Like, people don't go to the mall looking for cars. Who are these for? Sweet, sweet cannon. Oh, oh I'm sorry, canyon. Oh, wait, there's a literal cannon in this track? Ha. Huh. All right, we're moving the line again. DK Jungle. 
Again, there's some big jumps here. Maybe not the safest. Look, I work with what I got. Oh boy, I'm losing my voice. I've been recording too long. Mario Circuit. Again, assuming zero gravity is a thing that can reliably keep you on the road, pff, who would want to drive around a Mobius strip? You know, those things you made in school where you like, you take a strip of paper and you, you twist it, and then you, you tape it together, kind of like that, and then the whole thing is, it's just one side all the way around? You know, those things they taught you to teach you about, about Mobius strips, I guess? Tokyo Blur is another city level like the others, but apparently this one had just enough variation and extra turns to bump it over the edge of the fun line. And I guess that makes sense. I mean, driving through Tokyo does seem pretty cool. Or maybe it still sucks. It's driving through a major city. That's never fun. And lastly, the single track that is simultaneously the most fun while still being completely safe? Yoshi's Valley. The track with so many branching paths, you could go around it a dozen times and never repeat it in the exact same way. I think, I mean, I haven't tested it yet. And to make things even better, it's mostly just regular dirt roads. No death traps, no falls to your death, no suffocation, just some good old fashioned driving. Unless you go this way, oh, or this way, or that way, or, you know, play with items on, that's dangerous. Or play with other drivers, really. The AI is just terrible. Or if you're going over the speed limit. I mean, come on, people. We're on dirt roads here. Or if you really get behind the wheel of a car at all. Man, driving is dangerous, isn't it? Crazy. Hey, Richard, did you ever uh, get around to hitting that intro in the... Oh! Yes, sir.